Good evening and welcome to the Day Deep Show on the Jumping Instructors Network. Tonight's a very special night, and I want to take a moment to recap. The last five weeks has been quite the roller coaster ride. I appeared on a show with Randy, and uh, we had a lot of fun, and she said, Hey, do you want to start your own show and, and have, have some fun on the network? And said, Well, I'm not teaching or coaching or doing any horse shows right now, so yeah, let's just uh, let's give it a try. And the response from the viewers and the fans has been fantastic. In our first month, over 20,000 fans have signed up to uh, to watch the show, and I'm really overwhelmed by the response. And I had no idea at that time, you know, we'd be doing something on this grand scale, and no idea on that time we'd be having a special guest like we do tonight with McLean. First of all, I want to thank Laura and Randy, my producers, and the Jumping Instructors Network for making this all possible. And I also want to thank the team very special welcome to farm vet and desert international horse park farm vet is the best place to get your pharmaceuticals and all the needs for your horses um, i had a great experience with them this year in in thermal california we had a horse that was acting up a little bit a little out of balance uh, with her hormones and someone mentioned uh, and very obscure therapy uh, supplement and i said uh, i went to farm vet and i said hey have you ever heard of this not only had they heard of it, they had two different products and they were so knowledgeable about it. Um, visit farmvet.com, use the J Duke Show discount code and order everything to make your horse uh, the best they can be. I also want to say a special thank you to Desert International Horse Park. The shows this year were just fantastic. I can't wait to go back. The improvements to the facility, um, the attitude there was incredible from from walking the, the security in the parking area to the show staff, to the people at the gate, to the upper level management. Everyone was so friendly. Uh, everyone walked around that horse show with a big smile and I definitely will be back and I hope to see you there as well. So tonight is, um, when I started this again five weeks ago, I, I didn't really think we would be having uh, a superstar like my guest tonight on the show, but um, you know, we've evolved pretty quickly and I'm so happy to, to welcome my guest tonight. He really needs no introduction. He's, uh, I was going to read off some of his accomplishment, accomplishments, but it's only a 30 minute show. So I, I ran out of time and ran out of paper. Um, but he is a two time Olympic gold medalist and he is former world number one. And he's ranked number 10 right now in the Longies world rankings. Uh, mega star, superstar equestrian athlete, McLean Ward. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks, Jay. It's great to be here with you. Uh, as we were just speaking a few minutes ago, we go back a long way, uh, 25 plus years, and, and yeah. I've been very close with you and your family. And so it's an honor for me to be here and, and get a chance to talk with you. Oh, thank you. Well, it's good to catch up. I haven't seen you this year, obviously, with everything going on. So it's, I guess this is the Absolutely. way we're all communicating these days. Is, is through our It is. It's a new world, and, and uh, it's nice to be able to, to share this time with you and, and all the guests. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Let's start off. Um, I'm always fascinated by how people get started in, in show jumping and in the equestrian world. There's always some great family stories there. What was what was your start? How, how did you get involved? Well, absolutely. I mean, you use the word family. I mean, uh, both my parents are professionals, uh, Barney and Chris Ward. My mom was originally from California, my dad from the East. Uh, my father was a very successful Grand Prix rider. Uh, my mother rode hunters and trained. Um, so, you know, it was, it was available to me and kind of in the daily life, right from the beginning, I, I didn't really know anything else. Um, my parents were divorced when I was quite young. Um, and my first few years riding, you know, even though my mother was very patient was, was not great. I, I wasn't very good. Um, and I didn't take to it so naturally. Um, but as I got a little bit older, um, and I wanted to be more interested in the jumpers because that was uh, the way I was going to get to spend a lot of time with my father who was on the road all the time. Yeah. Um, and that kind of took off at that point in my early teens and, and, uh, I got an act for, for the jumpers and also had some success in the equitation. Um, and the, the career kind of went from there, but it was certainly, it was in the family, um, on both sides. And. And now it's kind of come full circle. I'm getting to share it with with my family as well as as my kids are starting to to yeah. enjoy the animals. Yeah, good luck with that. I can tell you, it's a lot more <laughs> nerve wracking watching watching it is than riding. That's for sure. Well, it's funny you say <laughs> that too. But 
I, I was, you know, my daughter, my wife helps my, my five-year-old daughter. Mm-hmm. We have a newborn as well. Um, and then Charlie Moorcroft, who does an incredible job with the, with the kids on the ponies in Florida and helps a lot of the professionals, children. Um, and one day I was trying to give her a little uh, a bit of feedback on her heels. And okay. she looked at me and she goes, you know, dad, you're not the expert of this. <laughs> and I looked to Laura and my wife and I said, I thought I was the expert of one thing in my life, but I am not. You know, nope, I found nope. out. You know. <laughs> so we're just beginning the journey, but it's it's already pretty awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Who would you say, you know, and the journey that you've been on to, to getting going to number one in the world, to getting to the top? Who's been the biggest influence in your life to, to as far as where you've gotten from a business perspective and, and as far as from a professional perspective to, to make who McLean Ward is today? Well, you know, again, as you say, it's a, a 30 or 40 minute show. You know, I could I could pay gratitude to the people who have helped me become the rider, the horseman, the businessman, and, and to be honest, the, the man that I am for hours, you know. There have been so many people uh, who have contributed to to who I am um, and have not only helped directly along the way, but indirectly. Um, you know, I, I think the people that jump out ahead for sure are my parents. You know, um, my my riding style comes from my mother, from my mother's teaching. Okay. You know, she was a she was a school. She was a student of the kind of Jimmy Williams uh, California school. She grew up in San Francisco. Um, and was always a, a great admirer of what Jimmy was teaching. Um, so, you know, right from the beginning, basics and position uh, were very important. Uh, and then obviously, you know, it's been, been you know, well spoken of, but, you know, my father obviously had just an incredible impact. Um, I rode with my father for uh, 25 plus years, mm-hmm. just worked for him, and then eventually took over the, the business. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously my father made incredible sacrifices for, for my career, he, he really set the way forward um, for, for what he believed I was capable of. And he was my, my biggest critic, but my biggest fan. Yes. Um, and one thing I, I've spoken a lot about, yeah, one thing, and you knew him very well, right? I mean, you, you and my dad were, were, were quite close. He was one always, thing I've, I've always spoken great a lot. Yeah, always, he was yeah, always, he always a gentleman, always polite. Um, I remember meeting him for the very first time. It was at Spruce Meadows and he was such a larger than life character and, and he was, just this will to win when he rode was, and, and I just loved watching. I was like, Oh my God, that guy really wants to win. It was really, uh, he was a, he was a fierce competitor and yeah. um, uh, instilled that in me. Um, but he also gave me the opportunity for, for a more classic education in horses. Um, my father was self-taught. Um, he was a scrapper. He was a seat of the pants. Um, and he was a very smart horseman. He, he knew how to get the most out of horses and particularly difficult horses. Um, where, you know, my journey, he made it very di- different, you know, it was a much easier journey, um, with great teachers. Um, I was forever, uh, around the best in the industry and in, in every, every facet of it from, you right. know, riders and trainers to veterinarians and blacksmiths and across the board. Um, and one thing, one great gift that I, I reflected on a, a few years back, you know, in my father's time, the, the institution of the USET in America was, was quite elitist. You know, it wasn't for the regular working professional. Um, and there was a lot of his generation that was quite, quite frustrated and jaded about that and, and didn't, didn't think that highly of the, the, the team concept and the Olympic movement. Uh, and my father did. not he, he was a huge fan of Burton Emothy. He felt that was someone that was um, incredibly ahead of his time and in a, in, a, in a great deal of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, my father always believed that the, the best was going to be the, the, the direction of the Olympics and representing your country and the team. And he always felt that that was going to come full circle. And for me, that was a great gift because I didn't grow up um, thinking anything other than that was the ultimate goal. And, and that mm-hmm. really steered my career competitively. Uh, other people that, that, you know, need to be mentioned, Paul Vellier taught me from seven to 17, um, brilliant riding instructor, uh, contributed uh, tremendously to, to the rider, uh, that I am today. Um, and I was also exposed to, uh, some great European, uh, riders and trainers like Paul Schockmuller, Albert Vaughn. Um, these were all people that were in my daily life and whether it was, it was directly working with them um, on a day-to-day basis with my riding or just watching them or being around them or, or their comfort level with me as, you know, a horse show kid. Right. Um, so, so that was a huge, a huge factor. 
Mm-hmm. You know, in my in my operation, you know, Lee and Eric and McKeever, who most of the people in the sport will know very, very well. Um, they're the true the true geniuses behind what we do here uh, at Castle Hill. They've been with my family 32 years. Um, they are the very best at what they do. And, you know, they're they've been a, a massive part of, of our success. Of course. Um, we wouldn't have reached where we are without them. Uh, and, that, you know, obviously all the sponsors, all the people who, you know, large and, and, and small have contributed to owning horses, believing in me, um, you know, people like Hunter Harrison and Harry Gill, the, the Sweeney's and Dolan's, um, you know, the list, the list goes on and on. And we, we've got some great new owners and, and Susan Heller and Marilla Van Buren. Um, so I've never had any shortage of people believing in my dream and it becoming our dream. Nice. Um, you know, that's been a real special journey. Um, and people who really have gone above and beyond um, to, to make some, some wonderful horses available to me. Um, and I, I would say I would say the last the last and, and probably the most influential figure is, is Ben Francois Metzi. Um, he was my dad's partner for over 28 years. Um, Francois is about 30 years older than me. Um, but we have this incredible relationship where I went to work for him in the early 90s. And, um, you know, now I can be with him in a car for 11 hours. And it's, you know, like two guys in their 20s trying to find that uh, that superstar <laughs> behind behind the tree somewhere, you know? So, um, <laughs> you know, I think these people for sure would stand out in, and my successes are, are their successes. Um, but, you know, there's been an endless list of people who have contributed large and small. Let's talk about what separates you from the pack. Um, you are known for a couple things, or three things I, that I think everybody can point out. One is your classical American Ford style of riding. Two is your focus. Um, everyone, you know, admires your focus and that that's very apparent. And uh, three would be your attention to detail. You're, you're very, you're very particular, you're very specific, um, detail oriented person is, would you say, what would be the two things that are separate you and has gotten you to the top? And, and maybe I, I probably missed something here. What, what, what separates yeah. McLean Ward from the pack? Well, you know, I, I, I think, you know, I've been able to, to mix a, a phenomenal education and riding and training uh, of horses um, with a competitive detail oriented tenacity. Um, and I've been surrounded by the best. Uh, I've been surrounded by the best horses, uh, which comes from having the best supporters. I've been surrounded by the best teachers and trainers and horsemen in the world, which, you know, adds to your education and your, your wealth of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, and the best people within my organization from the beginning. Um, and I believed in them and they believed in me. It, it's not been always an easy journey, um, but it's a journey that, that we were committed to each other um to be on and and you know listen in the last in the last 15 years also you know I, my wife has been added to that who's you know brought it lauren's brought another facet to to our to our family and and to what we do and and only made things better and you know been able to step up uh and help me in ways where i had weaknesses and and so i think all of these people you know uh, i've always believed if you're around the best people and you can organize things that you have a have a single vision um you're going to have some level of success um and um you know that's what we love and you know you notice in this time jay and i I remember i also thought about this uh, back in 2012 very very keenly uh, when i was injured now when we've had these long gaps of of rest and you know I have a beautifully blessed life. You know, I have a life that people would say, I will get to this point and and we'll retire and enjoy, (laughs) enjoy everything. Um, But I like the chase. The the prize is there and that's nice. And we all like a nice quality of life, but, but what, what inspires me, what gives me energy, what makes me happy is the chase. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big difference. You know, I, when I, when I hear people talk about the end of their career retirement, I, I get a bit, a bit uncomfortable. Um, I, I don't want it to end. And I think that keeps you seeking every day and trying to, to better yourself and be the best that you can be. Right. Yes. Yeah. That drive. And uh, I don't think that drive is let up in you at all. I, I certainly you're still have that competitive fire and that's showing in the ring. And um, I don't think you're slowing down anytime soon by the looks. Of no, it. I would agree, you know, and, and, 
you know, at this point in my career, it's also going to different outlets, you know, particularly with, with teaching and coaching a couple of really top, top class athletes, you know, I mean, top championship riders themselves uh, over the last decade. Um, you know, that, that focus and energy um, has been shared with them. And, and that's been a great source of, of pride for me. Um, as well as, you know, the, those students, I, I wouldn't even call them students because these are people that would be successful in this sport in any walk of life with or without me and their, their team. Um, but it's given me a great deal of energy and, and, and zest for, for staying at the top of the sport. So that's been a real pleasure as well. One win or one accomplishment that you've did, and it can go, I don't if it was on ponies or, I mean, you won medal finals, um, what stands out? I did that? not win medal in the clay finals. I won USCT finals. USCT. I, yeah. I, I was talking with Missy Clark the other day, and I still haven't let a McClay finals go. I was second, and then she trained the winner. And she's, she says, McClay, you got to let it go. I said, I can't. I just can't let it go. <laughs> well, that might be my next question. Is gonna be, what's your biggest, biggest disappointment in riding? Yeah. So maybe we've already got there. Yeah. Um, what's your, but what's your biggest the one moment that you're like that, that stands out. And I, I know that's a tough one. You've won a few classes, but what stands out above the rest? Yeah, you know, it is a tough one because there've been, been so many incredible moments. Um, as I said earlier, I, I love the fight, right? I, I love, I love to be in the trench and be in the jump off or be in the second round of a, of a championships nations cup. You know um, it's, it's really what I live for from a, from a sport point of view. Um, and look, there's also some some great accomplishments that maybe aren't so obvious to people. You know, I've had a career that's had some incredible highs, but it's had some very deep lows and some very difficult moments. And sometimes simply, you know, returning from a setback or overcoming something that was a, a bigger obstacle than anybody imagined in my own mind. You know, it hasn't been all easy and and roses and I woke up and it was all fun. You know, it's it's been a struggle at times. So there's been certain moments in my career where I've fought back mm -hmm. um, from adversity. Um, I would say probably a little bit because it's it's so so you know close in time um, to be able to pull off what we did in in try on um, mm -hmm. to you know I had a, a coached Adrian Sternlich who made that team which was really um, she really broke a glass ceiling from her background in the sport um, and uh, contributed beautifully to that accomplishment. Um, I felt that that there was a lot of pressure on me uh, in that particular team and championships uh, and to be able to pull that off um, on our home soil. Uh, that, was, that was a pretty, pretty incredible moment in sport mm -hmm. and, and for my family and, and the people around me personally. Right. Yeah, that that was. And it was unex it was a bit of an unexpected comeback that you guys made. And uh, certainly the home crowd I think competing at home in a team event. Um, that that in itself is such a special, and so to come come up with a gold medal in that atmosphere um, is perfect. Perfect moment. No, it was a, it was a great thing. You know, that was a championships that had had some setbacks from a production point of view. Um, mm -hmm. The world the world wasn't looking so so fondly on on what we were doing there in the United States, and I just felt that um, there was a lot of pressure on the Americans to to put on a great sporting event and and. You know, to be able to come off, pull it off and, and win that, um, right. uh, I felt uh, was a huge contribution. There was a few other medals. I felt like I was dragged along on the coattails <laughs> by some 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 greater, greater riders than me at the time. So, well, you've had a few good teammates for sure along the absolutely. way. Absolutely. And that's that's what makes it happen. Your biggest disappointment in your riding. And again, you've been. You, there's been a lot of them and, and uh, you've overcome and it, it's a fantastic job with what you've done. But what what do you feel was the one that hit you the hardest? Well, you know, when these questions are asked again, there's, you know, people are always looking for a specific right a day, you know, on you know, May 15th, <laughs> Sunday, you know, um, and, and like the answer to the other question. And, and I get off often asked now a little bit what I think about my legacy. And I, and I always say first, you know, look, that's, that's making me feel a little older than I am. I'm not, I'm not quite there yet. I'm not there yet. Um, but I, I would say, you know, when I think about how I want to be remembered in the sport is I've made a lot of missteps. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've had great days and I've had bad days, but I've always fought harder and tried to be better the next day. Um, and I, and I hope that that's how people reflect when they look at my career as a, as a rider and a trainer. Uh, as a competitor and, and uh, whatever else I do later on down the road. Mm -hmm. um, if, I, if I've if i got to pick a specific, um, 
you know, 2014 WAG with Rothschild. Um, that what that horse accomplished in his career um, was against the odds. He was by no means conventional. He he would not have been a horse that would have seen success in many programs. Uh, and frankly, he only saw success in my program because of my father's influence. You know, my father mm -hmm. saw the quality and the the competitiveness in that horse, and mm -hmm. um, and he believed in him always, and and contributed hugely to to the how that horse was produced. Um, yes. That horse to go on and win the the, the gold medal of the Pan Am Games, um, and then to win a bronze medal team and be be fifth individually by less than a fault um, at the WEG, um, really was nobody would have put a dollar on that. Nobody would have bet on that other than my dad. Maybe. But my your dad, he, he that. believed yeah, my dad that the whole time. No, nobody else did, including you, but he did. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> and it was the last, you know, I get a little emotional. It was the last horse that he was really a major part of mm -hmm. uh, in my career. Um, and I think, you know, that was the last year of the final four. Um, and we make a lot of arguments pro and con in the final four. And, and I think the reality is it, it probably had to go away for a lot of reasons, but the, but the pro arguments of the final four of the world championships were, that was going to be interesting to see people deal with that horse. You know, that was going to be, um, what that, what that test was designed for. Um, right, and right. I think it would have been an incred incredible moment, um, to, to, to watch and see and, uh, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that, that, that was a disappointment. I, I felt that the, the horse deserved it. I felt everybody around me did, did an incredible job to pull off that result. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, we were just a little bit, bit unlucky um, uh, not to make that, that final four. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as disappointments go, the, the Olympics this year, that, you know, you obviously would have been a favorite to be on the team. Um, and it does look like that's still going to happen, of course. But, you know, you the Olympic to, to prepare for a championships takes so much time, so many months of preparation and, and years of preparation to really get there. When that word came down that that wasn't going to be happening in 2020, um, tell us how that felt. Well, I mean, I think we by the time the decision was made, we had had enough time to digest that that was probably what was going to happen. It wasn't a shocker. Right. I mean, right. when they finally announced that Tokyo was being pushed back, mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't think it came as a surprise. And, and to be totally candid with you, I'd already moved on in my brain to trying to make decisions um, and plans for an Olympics a year later. OK, um, I, I think particularly for the United States, um, it, it might be a blessing. Um, we had a, every horse uh, that was on the, the, the WAG team in 90, uh, sorry, 2018, 98, 2018 um, had had an injury following the championships, you know, within several months of the championships um, and had an injury and had some time off. Um, and those horses were on the way back up. But, you know, there were certainly questions whether they'd had enough time to be sure. you know ready for the Olympic Games. Um, so I think that I, I looked you know, right away. And this is how my brain works, you know, and I think it goes back to the question of, um, you know, what separates, you know, I never, I'm never a person for very long that says, oh, you know, poor me, you know, the world's against me. I, I think, okay, well, how do, how do I position myself to be in a better position in a year from now? You know, were there, were there things, you know, in the short turnover from 2018 to the Olympic games this year, mm -hmm. um, that, uh, that, you know, maybe I was a little concerned about that I wasn't quite ready myself, you know, um, mm -hmm. you, as you say, you build towards the championships and, and sometimes, particularly when a, when a championship is like try and take so much out of you, you know, energy right. and physically and, and of the horses and of the people around you, um, you, you know, 18 months is a quick turnaround to be, <laughs> you know, basically ready mm -hmm. to go to a, to a trial yeah. situation or, or a championship. So, you know, I, I think it might be a blessing for the United States team. I, I think we could come back stronger next year. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm certainly going to look at it that way, mm -hmm. um, you know, for myself and the people that I guide. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not we're not uh, moping about it. We're trying to make decisions to be in a better place uh, come next July. Well, certainly you and the team will be medal contenders in Tokyo, and we look forward to watching you there. 
2020. You. And you know, look, the you know, not to leave the topic, but you know, yeah. the the amazing thing about the sport now is that there's a lot of medal contenders. You know, you see in London, you know, the the favorites weren't didn't make the second round. So, um, you know, that's that shows the the strength of the sport throughout the world. And you know what, you got to keep pushing every day to be the best. Yes. Yeah. No. The team the team competition is is amazing. And and unfortunately, we won't get into how the team situation is going to look a little bit different over there. But I think everyone is hopeful and optimistic that it is going to work out for the best with a different format. And uh, I'm sure knowing you, you will do everything you can to take advantage of the different system and setup that they have. Yeah, it's the format that we're going to we're going to face. And and as you say, there could be hours of debate about what's better. Um, but it's the format that it's going to be. And, uh, you know, same mindset, you know, how are we going to, how are we going to handle that format in the best way? Absolutely. So 2020 has been, uh, everyone knows what's been going on with the pandemic and the situation in the world. You're a, you're a leader in your industry. Um, people look up to you. Your name is known around the world, um, as a top equestrian, you're, you're a mega star. What are you, how do you feel your responsibilities are as McLean Ward to, to lead people through this time and to help them to, to get through it and to move forward and, and be positive and, and look ahead to the future. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, that's a very important question and, and, uh, and a personal question, you know, on a lot of levels, or at least I look at it in a personal way. Um, I always try and everything I do to, you know, first off, look at, you know, my actions or how I conduct myself is what I believe, right? You know, or, or what I appreciate and, and how I believe things. And I, I look at my own family here, um, the, the team of people around me, my, my staff, the people who work with me, you know, on a, when we first talk about the pandemic and, you know, before you get into the, to the political situations that, that are going on and, and in particular in our country, um, you know, I want to make sure that our business is sustainable, that my employees feel comfortable, that they have work and that we can we can weather a, a decent storm here financially. Um, you know, these people really, you know, give, you know, their life to to, you know, what our what becomes our mutual goal. But what starts out as my goal um, <laughs> right. and I you know, that's not lost on me um, and the time and the effort, um, not only, you know, the McKeevers who are very well known around the world. Um, for their work, but but you know everybody in my organization currently or has been over the years. You know we have a we have a an, I think an incredible reputation of being a phenomenal place to be part of the team. Um, so you know I think when the pandemic hit, um, my first reaction was you know how am I going to make sure that my family is safe and comfortable? How am I going to make sure my team is safe and comfortable? And you know how are we going to get through that uh, crisis? Um, with with as men as few ill effects as possible. If if I'm honest on that scenario, I'm so blessed that you know our life is is pretty good here. You know we're on a farm, we're not in an apartment. We work with animals every day. Um, we were lucky enough. We we took uh, my daughter and 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 Lauren and I went to a petting zoo today. And I and I said to Lauren on the way home, I said the only animal we don't have at the farm is the emu. <laughs> you know, so so you know my girls are are growing up in a pretty blissful existence. And mm -hmm. and um, you know I, I try to remember that. Uh, when we talk about you know obviously the the hotbed issues, the the Black Lives Matter, the the police. Uh, 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 killing the other day, um, it's a it's a tough time in in the United States. Um, it's a it's a confusing time. Um, it's a tough time to navigate when you look at your own personal beliefs on on culture and government and um, civil rights. Mm -hmm. And if I'm honest, I'm I'm struggling with those answers myself. I, I don't know. I mean, yes, the obvious things. You know, we all can see that. That's completely unacceptable. What happened in our in our country the the other day in Minnesota with the with the cops uh, and George Floyd? I mean, these 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 are obvious things. I I you know I don't see anybody saying different. Um, the way forward and how to make things better. Um, I, I don't have the answers, and you know, and I've been a little reserved about making too many public statements about it because I'm struggling and confused myself and. Right. You know, hoping that uh, we 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 find a way forward that that we can feel comfortable with, and and you know, all of the people of our country, and for that matter, the world can can feel that it's going in a good direction, and the system isn't against them, and certainly that they're not in fear uh, inappropriately for their life. 
Um, so, you know, these are complicated questions. And while I do make a statement here and there on different different subjects uh, on, on social media, I feel that on, on this subject, um, you really you really have to to know exactly either an answers uh, or, or how you feel. And, and I'm struggling with that myself and my family and I talk about it. My friends and I talk about it. It's it's not on deaf ears here either, um, but it's um, it's a tough time. There's no doubt about it. And I, I hope as a country, because I, I, for me, I know you're Canadian, but I, I you know, for me, America is, is the, the greatest place in the world. And I believe still in this country, but um, uh, we've got some things to sort out. No doubt about it. It'll, and it, it'll get there. And America is the second greatest country in the world. No doubt. And it's, it's a super place and it'll be, it'll be back. Yeah. I mean, you're a little bit cooler in the summer, you know, you don't have the humidity. I agree, but uh, <laughs> actually Canada has been very good to me, so I can't complain too much, but you know, I'm a, people know me in the sport. I'm a very proud American. I'm, I'm a, a very um, true blue believer of, of all the great things of this country and the concepts of government in this country and the, 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 the overall, um, sentiments of what America is about is still, I, I think, phenomenal. Right. Um, you That's know, in any society and the world changing as a whole, you know, there's a lot, uh, a lot of difficult things that the world is facing. Um, and when these, when these things also come, you know, rapid fire and, and become, um, you know, hot spots very quickly, you know, pun intended, um, you know, the world has trouble processing it and, and sorting through them and, and working through them. You know? And it's, it's a, a difficult position, you know, because you are a, a celebrity in your sport and yet you're also, you're a man and a father and a husband and, you know, and, and trying to navigate that line is, is tricky. So it's, I think it's great what you're doing, how you're, you're providing that strength for, for people to, to look up to and, and emulate. So, so. Well, and I'd also say, you know, going back, you know, talking about, you know, you, you, you start in life by, you know, taking care and, and how you and your family act and conduct yourselves and, and contribute to, to the world. And then, you know, your organization, your business, um, whatever things that you're intimately involved in or lead, you know, and, and then you go out a little bit, say the, the entire equestrian community. Right. And, you know, there's been a lot of discussions about the equestrian community as of late and, you know, there is no doubt we're, a, we're, a, it's a, it's a rather wealthy, insulated, uh, community. It's not dealing with a lot of the, the troubles and struggles of, of much of the world. Mm -hmm. But as a community, I also look to the pros. I, I do think we rally behind less fortune in our community. I do think we help people who are in crisis, um, people who have accidents or health issues or financial issues. And I, I can't think of times in my life where I've seen someone not receive that help and that, that hand from our community because of their race, sexual orientation, you know, creed, color, or, or whatever uh, difference we have. I, I think as a general rule, while we, we don't have a lot of minorities in our sport, um, I, don't, I don't see a lot of, of people pushing back to help our own community because of these, these differences. Um, and, and so I'm proud of that, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I think you have to look for how you take care of your own community and then try to expand that out, um, you know, to the greater, to the greater world. Absolutely. Talking about the, the horse shows and, and the equestrian community five years from now, um, you'll still be competing and winning Grand Prix. What do you think the sport's going to look like? Hope so. <laughs> That's the plan. What do you think the yeah. sport's going to look like, um, in that time? What direction, do you think that it that it's going, and um, do you have any do you have any ideas on what you would like to see happen? Well, you know, now we we, we particularly from a business and sport point of view, we talk about uh, pre pandemic and post pandemic, right? So uh, I'm going to start with with pre pandemic because I I actually think we're going to recover. I'm an optimist, so I think we're going to recover as a as a world quicker than 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 the naysayers think. I think people will, you know, pull their boots up and get on with it and rebuild their businesses and their and their situations and their lives. Um, and I think I want to believe that there is going to be a, a vaccine for this virus uh, sooner than later. Um, and I believe that, you know, that's when the world can start to turn a little bit more, you know, back to the normal, so to speak. 
Um, the sport before this broke um, was flying high, right? So it was growing at an incredible rate of speed. The numbers of people participating in particularly the main three horse sports, uh, you know, jumping, uh, dressage and eventing, but, but in horse activities in general, uh, memberships in every organization were going up. Um, uh, the, the grassroots people were, were really, there was a huge movement in the grassroots to bring back, um, that level of, of equestrian sports. Mm -hmm. And at the highest level of the equestrian sports, obviously, uh, the sport prize money was growing, you know, in incredible numbers, the amount of riders at top events, the amount of top events, uh, every, um, every week was, was staggering. You couldn't follow the results. So. Right. You know, I think uh, the, the sport and the, the business was very healthy um, pre-pandemic. Five years from now, look, I think there's going to be a little, there's going to be a little uh, half halt here, obviously. <laughs> um, I think the, the, the middle of the, the sport and the industry will take a little longer to recover probably than the top end. Um, I think there's a, and I've talked about this more recently, I think the sport at the, the high end has grown so much that there's a, there's a place for um, a slightly higher level series of events. Um, okay. There was some talk a, a little bit lately about, uh, well, you know, it should only be professionals at the top events, not the professional amateur, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't agree with that. I, I think it's great that people aspire to see how far they can go in their sport, whether they're necessarily making their living riding show jumpers or not. Um, I don't think that should be limited. I think it, it builds enthusiasm. It certainly builds the business. Um, you don't, let me interrupt for a sec. So you don't sure. feel that allowing some amateurs into those top elite competitions is going to, um, this has been said, you know, force the course designers to go a little softer and a little easier on the courses because it's not all top professionals or some amateurs involved. Right? And I and I get your thing. I just want to clarify your viewpoint on that, because that is a little different than what some people have been saying. Well, I think it should be a little bit of a free market. Right. So when you talk five star level, um, I think if if you should go down the ranking list to bring the best riders that are available to come. And that's why I think actually we have we have a we have an opportunity for either a six star level or a, a, a grand slam level where you had, you know, eight or 10 events a year, um, which, you know, were the best in every category. I actually think the events should compete to be in this series and, and that can change over time. You know, okay. it can be updated so that different events can can come and go if they are stepping up their game. Uh, and I think because those events are going to be so um, special it's going to bring the, the very best from all over the world, which will naturally then bring the best riders together. Right. Um, I, I don't think, I think it's very difficult to mandate, well, you can come, but you can't, you know, mm -hmm. even though you're, you know, there, there's top riders, riders in the top 10 that, you know, run a, run a company uh, outside of a horse business, you know? So we're going to say, well, you don't actually make your living. You know, I mean, you start to get into a very gray area and I think it's discouraging. I think it's discouraging. Um, I think that if you had this series of eight or 10 events every year, um, that were the best in every category that we would judge an event by, um, mm -hmm. you're going to draw the best from all corners of the world and, and the natural selection, so to speak, um, will, will provide a situation where you have the best riders with the best horses and the best, um, sporting event for the audience and the sponsors. Yeah. I agree 100% with that. And so it's, it's great to hear that viewpoint shared. Going back on your, your course, you know, I, I did a, I did a webcast a few weeks ago with two great course designers, mm -hmm. which I think you saw, I saw that. a little yeah. bit of, yeah. yeah. And, and I, and I love the courses and, and talking about all the history of the sport and, you know, there is no doubt that there are certain elements, the materials, lighter, uh, safety cups, uh, possibly less natural obstacles, which really test bravery. Um, but I also think that has a lot to do with, with the image of our sport, um, in the, in the general public, you know, um, you had, you had, you know, 30 years ago in Calgary, you know, all professional riders competing at the masters, but you know, the image of our sport, you know, we no longer, and rightfully so no longer find it acceptable for a horse to be falling, uh, through a fence or falling on the backside of a jump. So, you know, we need to change as what we find um, um, acceptable from the horse welfare point of view has changed and we need to change with that. And, and um, 
And I think you're seeing that reflected in the courses. Um, it's not just because there are some professional amateurs doing the sport at a high level. Well, I will point out, though, um, Pierre Durand. And I, I remember him very well because he rode the – my favorite Jacques horse of all time, Jappaloo. I mean, he, that's my number one horse of all time. If there was one horse yeah, I could absolutely. put on, that would be him. So, and he was, he was very much an amateur. I um, mean, I believe he was a lawyer, full-time lawyer. And he was, you know, at that time competing and, uh, and winning um, and did a great job. So I, I do think there is some history of that in the sport. And I do think it's important to, to maintain that moving forward as well. I think that's, that's part. That's part of our story. That's part of our history. Let's and and those are great stories. No, we don't Absolutely. want to get rid of those. And I don't think um, you know those should be the the reasons to exclude someone from having the opportunity to compete at that level. If they're good enough, they should be able to go for yeah. sure. With the amount of five star events we have around the world, which may be a little bit checkered in this post uh, pandemic time because of economics, um, but you know I think every one of those five stars should bring the best you know, 40 or 50, I think it's 50 riders that are available. But I think you you have a moment here in the sport to to produce a Grand Slam series. And I also think, as you see in other sports like golf and tennis, uh, you see some athletes coming up who really focus on getting up the ranking and, you know, hitting multiple events. Uh, and then you see some other athletes, particularly a little bit further along in their career, maybe really focus on the championship events, the Grand Slam events. Yes. Um, you know, don't don't run as hard a schedule, but they they need to hit on the day. Um, so I think there's a balance there as well. Um, and I think that's I think that's good. Personally, yeah, those are two being number one in the computer rankings and setting up for the championships is, is definitely two different tasks. Um, trying to balance those two things, which you've done a very good job of in your career, but trying to balance those two things is, is very hard. Those computer rankings staying up there is uh, that's a grind. Yeah. You see people chase and, you know, look, I'm not going to say that, that, you know, being ranked number one in the world wasn't a, a great accolade and something I was very proud of and a, you know, a feather, feather in my cap. Um, but I always said, if I became number one doing it the way I want to do the sport, that's a great thing. I'm right. never going to do the sport in a different way to become number one. Right. Um, there were other things that were, were more important to me on the list of accomplishments than, than that. So I've asked you some tough questions tonight. You've been candid and straightforward, but now I'm going to put you on the spot. You're in the jump off. There's two of you. Who's the one rider in the world you don't want to face? <laughs> there's a few. <laughs> no, I know no, um, you name about 20, but I'm going to put it down. Uh, put it down. <laughs> so I, 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 well, two things. Um, I actually, and I remember someone saying, I remember Ian Miller saying this years ago. He said, I don't want to win because John Whitaker, I think Milton was, 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 the, was the battle at that time, right? John Whitaker, Milton, Ian Miller, and Big Ben. Yeah. And he said, I don't want to win because John Whitaker isn't the jump off. I want John Whitaker to go the best he can, and then I want to beat him. Uh, so I would say I feel the same. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I got to go with my teammate, Ken Farrington. Um, you know, we have a, a great friendship and we have a great battle. And uh, I often say, if I notice you in the schooling area, uh, you're doing well in the sport because you're on my mind. If, if I don't <laughs> see, there, there's some riders I never see in the schooling area. They're there, but I don't, I don't see them. But, um, you know, I think Kent and I are, are, are pretty cutthroat competitors and most nights, you know, after a big competition, no matter who won, we have dinner together. So, um, uh, <laughs> You know that's a that's a that's a great rivalry. Yes, yeah, it is a great rivalry, and you two are great friends. And I think you push each other to to new heights, and that's great for the American team, no question. Well, McLean, yeah, it's great you. for us too. So. Thank you so much. Um, you've been fantastic as always, and I wish you the best of luck. And uh, hello to your wife, and congratulations on your new daughter. And uh, we look forward to seeing you very soon. Well, Jay, it's been great to be with you. Also say hello to your girls for me. I saw the great gymnastic the other day. I, I uh, For our viewers, uh, Jay's daughter was doing a gymnastic, and I said, as long as you don't make me do that, I'll be okay. <laughs> I don't think I can accomplish that one. Um, but, you know, these programs are great. We appreciate your effort. It's, it's great for our equestrian community, and it's nice to be able to share some personal thoughts and, and some sport thoughts as well. And I uh, hope everybody has enjoyed it. And uh, I hope we, we see an event very soon. Good. We'll look, but we'll look forward to just having you back on the show very soon as well. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, that's our show for tonight. I want to thank FarmVet again for coming on board. 
Um, they are just the, the, such a fantastic company. You know, they put the health of your horse above all else at all times. Um, for equine athletes, when we're looking for supplements, pharmaceuticals, that's the place to go to. So visit farmvet.com, use the code, the J Duke show, you'll receive your special coupon and discount and take care of those wonderful, wonderful animals. And also another shout out to Desert International Horse Park. Um, they, they've expanded their series this year. So we're looking forward to that. They're working hard on the improvements. The improvements this year at the Desert Horse Park, if there was an award for most improved horse showgrounds, they definitely won the award. It was, it was outstanding. So looking forward to being back down there this fall at the horse shows and next winter. Thank you so much to Desert International Horse Park. And uh, yes, another thing, they do want to wish everyone a safe return to competition. And they're thanking all the show managers who are working so hard to get the horse shows back on the map for you as competitors. Um, it's, a, it's a big task, a lot of new guidelines. Running a horse show already was so difficult. Now with this going on, the work they're putting in um, is amazing. And check it out, though. That, that's going to be the place to be. And I look forward to seeing you on the showgrounds. We have uh, next week on Jumping Instructors Network, uh, guest Amy Center joins Laura Kellen May on Wednesday at 1 o'clock Eastern. And on Friday, June 19th, host Randy Thompson has Susan Harris of Centered Riding, which will be a very, very interesting show. And next Monday, I have uh, a health and wellness show. We have special guests Danny Conway and Sharon Classen coming on. We're going to show you how to be the healthiest rider you can be and that's something we didn't touch on tonight with McLean, but uh, looking after yourself is a, is a huge topic these days. And, uh, you know, we're athletes just like your horses are, and we're going to show you how to do that next week on the J Duke show. Thank you for watching and remember ride safely and always respect the horse.